What is going on, family? We are back with our weekly live. Hope all is doing well. I hope all is well. We are back today with our weekly live. Every week, 6 p.m., go live to get as much value to the community, as much value as value as possible. As you're tuning in, I want you to comment below. Where is it that you're tuning in from? Where is it that you're tuning in from? I'm excited about today's teaching. I'm really excited about today's teaching. We're going to go a little deeper today, right? The last weeks we've talked about purpose. We've talked about belief. We're going to go a little deeper today. Where is it that you're tuning in from? And then we're about to get into it. Lagos, Nigeria, what's up? Virginia, what's up? New Zealand. <laughs> What's up, Deborah? It was awesome talking with you today. I look forward to doing our session here soon. I look forward to doing our session here soon. It's so beautiful to see how the internet works, right? People are tuning in literally from all over the world. I wonder which one is further from me, Africa or New Zealand? It feels like Africa, Nigeria would be. From Germany, what's up, Trinidad? Naptown, what's up, what's up? Uh, what's up, Richard, from the Gallery Event Center? All right, so listen. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, a spiritual creation formula, a spiritual creation formula. And a lot of people come to me and they say, uh, how do you get into alignment? Like, how do you hear the voice of God? Uh, how do you keep that alignment with source? And what is it that you do from that? And today we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about three step spiritual formula that uh, once you truly embody, you don't just listen and believe it, but once you truly embody it, it open up so much to be able to create so much more in your life. You open up so much more to create so much more in your life, right? Um, there's a couple things that have to happen. Well, I'm not going to say have to happen, but in my experience, when I do certain things first, I build a, a deeper foundation to be able to hear the voice of God. To hear spirit, my ancestors, whatever that is for yourself. And I want to share with you those, those three things that I do. The three things that I do. The three steps to put myself in a state to be able to receive. Understand that life is all about uh, harmony, right? I don't want to say balance. Balance is 50-50. It's more about harmony. And there has to be a harmony between the energetic state you have of asking and the energetic state that you have of receiving. There has to be a, a, a in harmony to that. There has to be an alignment to that, right? So I want to say that again is there has to be an alignment between asking and a harmony between asking and harmony between receiving. Asking and, is, and receiving are two different vibrational states. And most people, they only live in a vibration of asking. So it's like you go and you ask and you ask and you ask God, and you ask the universe, and you ask spirit, and you ask and you ask. But you never put yourself, yourself in a state of receiving. I want you to put receiving in the comments. Put the word receiving in the comments. So just as much as you have to be in a state of asking, to the proportion, you need to be in a state of receiving. But most people, they do not allow themselves to be in a vibration of receiving. And there's reasons why. And that's what we're going to be talking about, right? So it's very important, right? Asking and receiving. There has to be a harmony. There has to be a harmony between inhaling and exhaling. There has to be a harmony between giving money out and money coming in. Anything in life, there has to be a harmony, right? So we're going to be talking about the harmony between asking and receiving. And how is it that you put yourself in the vibration of receiving, right? How is it that you could tap into the vibration of receiving? Because in the vibration of receiving, there's different people, circumstances, and opportunities that live on that vibration, Right. So it's very critical and it's very important to be in the vibration of receiving, to be in the and to be in the vibration of receiving. Right. So here's these three things. Right. The first step to this to this spiritual creation formula. I want you to write it down. It's, it's called a divine sense of well-being. A divine sense of well-being. Right. A divine sense of well-being. What does that mean? So I have a question for you. Imagine that 
I had a casino and I invited you to come work in my casino. And I said, every day you clock in, I'm going to give you $20,000. And your one job is to go out into the tables and play this $20,000 and have fun. Right? At the end of the day, at the end of the day, you come back and if you made money off of this $20,000, you give me all the money you made, you give me the $20,000, and then I'll give you $1,000 for the day. You get paid $1,000 a day. But at the end of it, at the end of the session, if you lost all the money, you come back, you tell me you lost all the money, and I still give you $1,000. So it doesn't matter if you went out and if you made all the money or you lost all the money, no matter what, you get $1,000. How would you play? I want you to put in the comments. How would you go out and play? Like, how would you play the tables? If I gave you 20 k if you made money, you come back, you get $1,000. If you lost it all, you come back, you give $1,000. I want you to put in the comments, how would you play? What would be your energy like? Would you, be, would you be playing scarce or would you be excited? Would you be playing full out or would you be kind of hesitating? Would you be having fun and taking a risk or would you be kind of like closed off like, nah, I need, I need to keep this money? Would you be feeling lack or would you be feeling abundant while you would be playing, right? We have full out freely. What are, what are the feelings that you'll be feeling, right? Would it, be, would it be lack? Would it be scarcity? Would it be, oh my God, if I lost all this, I'm going to be broken, I'm gonna, I don't have anything else to do? Or would you be trusting yourself in the process and having fun, right? So we have free, we have risky, we have carelessly, we have full out, right? The emotional state that you will have, abundant, I love that, Veronica, abundant. The emotional state you will have is different. Excitement, uh, excitement, right? Abundant excitement. But no matter what, you take this $20,000, you'll be cautious, okay? Even if no matter what, you got $1,000? Like, no matter what, if you lost it, you get $1,000. If you win it, you get $1,000, right? You have fun, abundant, free, right? What if you took that same principle and you applied it to your life? So if you have these three things, there's no reason you couldn't be in a divine sense of well-being. If you have safety... If you have food, oh, look at that thumbs up. <laughs> and if you have shelter. If you have safety, food, and shelter, then everything else is house money. Do you get that? Everything else is house money. If you have safety, if you have food, and if you have shelter, everything else is house money. That's your guarantee. If you, At the end of the day, if you want to lose the money, you get $1,000. Well, take the same case in this thing called life. At the end of the day, no matter how much I pursued my goals, what I went out here to do, at the end of the day, if I have safety, food, and shelter, I'm good. I'm good. Most people, you have all the things that you need, but you're still not playing full out in this thing called life. You have everything that you need. You have safety, you have food, you have shelter. Those are human needs. But you're still not allowing yourself to play full out. Because you're not worried about your safety, food, or shelter. You're worried about how you're going to be viewed by others. You're worried about how people are going to judge you. You're worried about how people are going to look at you. You're worried about if you fail, how you're going to feel about failing. So you're allowing yourself in life to be stopped by things that are not even the things that you need. You're allowing yourself to be stopped before you get started. At the end of the day, if you have safety, if you have food, if you have sh shelter, then you should be in a vibration of playing full out in life. Because you have a divine sense of well-being. That's what a divine sense of well-being means. No matter what, my being is well. Who I am is well. I have my food, I have my safety, I have my shelter. I'm well. Anything after that is a bonus. 
But I want you to ask yourself, are you not playing full out because of it's threatening your needs? Are you not playing full out because it's threatening your image in the way that you view yourself? Meaning you don't think people are going to care. You think people are going to judge you. You're not confident in yourself. You don't have a high level of belief. You don't look at yourself as somebody that's able to be, do, have anything that you desire. There's a huge difference. And if you allow yourself to tap into the frequency of a divine sense of well-being, that no matter what, I'm good. See, you can't create abundance coming from a place of lack. You can't create Wealth coming from a place of I don't have enough money. Because if you're coming from I don't have enough money, then you're you're vibrating on the frequency of I don't have enough. And that frequency just recreates more and more and more of itself. That's why you don't really you will never really get what you want. Because to say I want something is to come from the place of I don't have it yet. And everything that you do comes from the person that you're being. So if I'm being, I don't have it yet. I don't have enough. Then your doing is going to come from a place of scarcity. And a lot of you, you're moving out of a place of scarcity. You're moving out of a place of lack. You're moving out of a place of not good enough. Hoping to get abundance. It's impossible. Fundamentally, it's impossible. Because you get people, circumstances, and opportunities that align on the frequency of which you vibrate on. So if you vibrate on a frequency of lack, you get people, circumstances, and opportunities that reflect that lack. You got to catch this. You got to get this. So because you're coming from a place of lack, you're going to keep recreating yourself in that capacity. And it's going to be a hamster wheel. Because you're not coming from a place of a divine sense of well-being. All is well. I have my needs. I have food. I have safety and shelter. I'm good. I'm abundant. You could be in a place of abundance. I think it's like 80% of the world doesn't have food, safety, or shelter. Can you get that? So if you have food, safety, and shelter, you're doing better than 80% of the world. That's not to say that you can't uh, aspire to have more. But it's just you not coming from a place of I don't have enough of lack. Because the, wherever you come from, you create more and more and more of that. So when you have a divine sense of well-being, when you're able to sit still and say, I need nothing. I don't need anything. It would be nice to have more money. Yeah, it would be nice to have a bigger house, a faster car. But like, I need nothing. All is well. I have everything that I need. That vibration is way different. <laughs> I may desire another car. I may desire, but I need nothing. That vibration is way different. Because when you come from a space of abundance, guess what you attract? Guess what you attract? When you come from abundance, guess what you attract? You attract more abundance. When you come from, I don't have enough, guess what you attract? Your whole world looks like, I don't have enough. So when I come from a place of a divine sense of well-being, I have food, I have safety, safety, I have shelter, I'm good. I'm good. Anything else after that is just house money. But I'm good. Not that I don't have desires, not that I don't have ambitions, but at a fundamental level, I'm good. At a fundamental level, I'm good. You can create more of that. And that vibration, it gives access to step number two, which is a divine sense of listening. It's a divine listening. See, when you come from I don't have enough, you can't hear the voice of God. You can't hear your higher self. You can't hear spirit. You can't hear yourself talking because you're constantly hearing yourself, I don't have enough, I should be doing this, I should be further ahead in life, why am I messing up this last two years, I should be more accept uh, more money, look at what this person has, you're dealing with all of that. And because you're dealing with all that, you can't even hear the voice of God, because you just hear this voice of lack playing over and over and over and over again in your mind. 
So when you don't have a divine sense of well-being, when you're not well in your spirit, when you're not well in your energy, then, then you can't, it's hard to have that connection that allows you to just receive because you're in a, a vibration of just asking, 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 asking. I don't have enough this. Can I have more money? Can I have more of this? 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 And you're not in a vibration of receiving. And there has to be harmony. Just as much as you act, you have to be in a vibration of receiving. Just as much as you're giving, you have to be in a vibration of giving, of getting. So when you don't feel like you have enough for your fundamental level as a person, then it's hard for you to listen to God. But when you can look at your life, you can say, you know what? I have food, I have safety, I have shelter. You know what? I'm good. All the other things I'm stressing about is the bonus. I'm stressing about the money. I'm stressing about the cars, stressing about the career. Like, but those things are bonuses. But in my essence, I'm good. Then it creates the space for you to listen to God. From this place, God, from this foundation of abundance, from this foundation of all is well, what else is there for me to receive? What instructions do you have for me? What insights? Where are you looking to take my life? Show, make it clear for me. Where is it that you want me to go? It changes your frequency. Now you can hear instruction. Now you can hear insight. Now you can hear advice. Now you can receive the nudge that's telling you to move in a certain direction. But you can't listen when you're telling yourself how much you don't have, when you're speaking limitation over yourself and over your life, because you're worried about all the extras, that you're not being grateful for the foundational level, that all is well. All is well. You got to get to that point to where you can say all is well. Yeah, I know you don't have as much money you want to have, but all is well. I know you don't have the car, but all is well. I know you don't have all these things, but all is well. Oh, I know I'm about to lose rent, but... Do you have a parent house you can stay at? Do you have a best friend? I know that's not what you want. I know that will really mess with your ego to have to go back home. But could you? At the end of the day, could you? If you're worried about your safety, your shelter, or having food, then it's, you, those are human needs. Those are basic things that you got to take care of. But most people are not worried about that. Most people, even if they have to go and live with somebody, they have food, they have safety, they have shelter. Your mom, your grandma, your best friend, your auntie, your uncle, your cousins. So you have the things that you need, but you're stressing about all the things that you want. And you can't create from that space. Because you're created from luck. And if you want to know why your life is not progressing the way in which you're desiring, it's because you're creating from luck. You're not vibrating on the frequency that all is well. And when you do that, you get the divine listening. You can hear God. You can hear instructions. And then you want to know what you do after that. So I want you guys to put in the comment, well-being, divine sense of well-being. That's step number one. Step number two is a divine listening. Well-being says, I have food, I have safety, I have shelter. Everything else is house money. Everything else is an addition. Everything else is a plus. But I have food, I have safety, I have shelter. So number one is a divine sense of well-being. Number two is a divine listening. And number three is divine execution. Divine execution. And I say divine execution because it's not you making. There's execution and there's divine execution. See, execution says, I don't have this, I don't have this, I don't want this. What are the things that I think I need to do? And you go ahead and do these things. Divine execution says, all is well. Spirit gave me this instruction, so now let me go execute it. But it's not just me and my humanness. I have God on my side. I have spirit on my side. I have my ancestors on my side. I have all the energetic and spiritual forces on my side. Because what I'm executing on comes from them. When I'm executing on, it comes from them. So that's a divine execution. And the times in my life where I've listened to spirit and I listen to instruction 
and then I went out here, out here and executed on it. My life took quantum leaps. Things occurred in ways that I couldn't even imagine. My life made leaps and bounds in ways that I couldn't even imagine. Because when I was executing, it wasn't just based off of my will. It was based off of God. It was based off of spirit. It was based off of ancestors. It was based off of all those spiritual components that were involved and supported me. And my life went to a radically different level when it was divine execution. That's the difference from thought to inspired thought. From thought to aligned thought. You can have a thought, but if I'm driving down a car and I see a, a Brinks truck right in front of me and I have a thought, let me go rob them. <laughs> Whoever had that thought? Have you ever had the thought where you saw like a truck or you pulled up to a, 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 a place and you saw the person coming out with the bag of money? You like, damn, like, I, I just had that real quick, <laughs> right? <laughs> but that's a thought that just comes and goes. That's not a thought that I, I sit with. That's not a thought that I write out a plan and I think about. That's just a thought that comes and goes. That's a passive thought. It's like a cloud in the sky. It's here one moment and gone the next. But when I'm operating from aligned thought, when I'm operating from inspired thought, that it's not just a thought that is getting made up in my humanness. It's a thought that is coming from spirit. And every time I had ideas and I had thoughts that was coming directly from spirit that I went and took action on, my whole life changed in ways that I never even imagined. It's where my name comes from. It's where my business comes from. The best things in my life, it came from inspired thought. It came from inspired action. It came from aligned thought. It came from aligned action. And my life took off in a capacity that, that it never had before. If you have those three things, a divine sense of well-being, a divine listening, and then you divinely execute on it, your life will go to a whole different level. Because you'll be taking action on the things that God has been trying to get your attention to take action on for so long. So many of you out there right now, you have ideas, you have goals, you have dreams that you just can't seem to get rid of. And you know God is calling you to do, but you just can't get your action. You just can't get yourself to get in motion. And it's on the opposite side of those dreams, those goals, those instructions that has the most for your life. Type a 777 in the chat if you know what I'm talking about. Type a 777 in the chat. It's on the opposite end of those that your life manifests itself in a way, different way. But you got to get yourself to take action on the goals and the dreams and the instruction that spirit is given to you. You can't keep hoarding instruction. Because you keep asking God, God, what is it that I need to do? What's next? What is that that I need to do? And God has already put something right in front of you. Here's the next action that you need to take for your life. But you're like, God, I'm... That's going to require money. That's going to require time. I don't know if I could do that. Why do you think God will put something in your pathway that you feel aligned for you to do just for you not to be able to do it? That makes no sense. No creator has ever created a product to be defective. So why do you think you being defective is what God desires? So if God has put an opportunity in your face, a person, an opportunity, a situation that you feel aligned that this could take my life to the next level, you have to learn how to get out your own way. You got to learn how to get enough out your own way. It's, it's fascinating how many people pray for opportunities. God, I'm ready to better my life. And then an opportunity comes. And then a person comes. And then a situation comes. And you don't take the step in order to do that. God gives you the business idea, but you don't go out here and execute it. God gives you the person, but you don't bring that person into your life. God gives you the idea, but you don't go out here and create it. Anytime I have something that I know is for me in my life, I don't question it. I sit with it. God, is this, is this from you? 
which when I operate in alignment, I know it's coming from source. Great. Show me. What's the path? Show me how is it that I can make this the pathway for it? I know you're telling me to go to Africa, but like where? I woke up on Wednesday. God told me to go to Africa. I ended up flying out by Sunday. And by the time I flew out in those four days, when I woke up, I knew nobody, nothing, anybody in Africa. By the time I was on my flight there, I had a three-week itinerary planned out for me. I ended, I ended up speeding across to Africa, and I was meeting with one of the most influential people uh, in Kenya. <laughs> and all of that came from following the in instruction. All right, God, you're telling me to go to Africa. Let me start taking steps. Let me start reaching out. Let me start crawling. Let me start seeing things. My coach, I shared this in my last live. I worked with my coach. He was 10K for two hours. After I worked with him for one time, I said, I want to work for him a year. All right, God, you didn't bring me this far. Show me what is it that I need to do. How is it that I need to take action? I ended up working with him for the next year. I moved to Arizona just to work with him. Anytime God puts something in front of my face that I know is for me, I don't talk myself out of it. I talk myself into it. <laughs> a lot of you, you talk yourself out of things. I don't talk myself out of things. I talk myself into things. All right, great. What is it that I need to do? Who is it that I need to talk to? What is it that I need to overcome internally to take this step? How can I trust myself? How can I build up my confidence? How can I execute this? Start talking yourself into the things that you know is for you. Stop talking yourself out of the things that you know is for you. That's what creation is. It's letting nothing and no one come in between you and it. If you do those three steps, have a divine sense of well-being, all is well. As long as I have food, safety, and shelter, I'm good. A divine listening coming from that place that all is well. Allow me to listen to the spirit of God. Allow me to listen to my ancestors. Allow me to listen to the universe. Allow me to listen to Allah, Buddha, Jesus, whatever that is for yourself. And then now that I listen and I receive, I'm not asking. Get what I just said. All is well. Where is it that you want me to take my life? What is the next step that you want from me? What is it that I know I need to do, but I'm fearful and it's holding me back? Show me what is it. Listen. Listen. Show me, God. I'm here listening. I'm not praying. I'm not asking for more money. I'm listening. And then when you get the instruction, you take action and divine execution, your life will go to a different level. I've been able to create the life that I have right now because of those three steps. And anytime I feel off kilter, I just ask myself, at the end of the day, do I have food? At the end of the day, do I have safety? Do I, at the end of the day, I have shelter? As long as I have those three things, anything else is good. As long as I have those three things, anything else is good. Anything else is house money. And now I can play. Now I can play full out. Now I can have fun. Now I can tap into the frequency, the vibration of abundance. I can tap into the uh, vibration of taking risk. I can tap into the vibration of putting money up to invest in myself, invest in my goals, invest in my business, invest in my dreams. Because I'm not coming from a place of scarcity. And if you start, uh, stop allowing scarcity to control your moves and you start moving from a place of abundance and knowingness, your life will go to a different level. What's good, Sam? Your life will go to a different level. Any questions? What are the questions? Does anybody have any questions? Does anybody want to come on live? I do 30 minutes a week, giving you guys game. And then I open it up for questions. Are there any questions you could put in the chat? You could request to come online. This is your opportunity to get insight, to get coaching, to get advice, whatever that is for your life. I want to take a second to ask any questions. Guys, this, these three steps are so important. These three steps are so important. It's so important that you get to a space within yourself knowing that all is well. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I know you don't have as much money in the bank. It's okay. I know you don't have the car. It's okay. I know your friends have bigger houses. It's okay. But the more that you know it's okay, the more that you can listen to God. Any questions before I get out of here? Does anybody have any questions? Anybody want to come on live? Drop a question in the chat or just request to be on live. Any questions? Any comments? Any observations, any concerns? Appreciate you, Sam. Get into that space is so powerful. I didn't change your life, you did. I appreciate you for being willingness to invest in yourself. I appreciate you for having the willingness to be coachable. 
When people say I changed their life, you have to take the first step. God put each other in our life. You saw what there was to get and you got it for yourself. You got it for yourself. You did that work. God tells everybody, God gives everybody opportunities. Everybody doesn't take it. You did, Sam. I appreciate you. I love you dearly for that. How long did it take for me to reach this level? Uh, I guess it took me 29 years because <laughs> that's how old I am. I don't know. I don't even know the level that the, the, the specific level. Make a comment. What do you mean by that level? I don't know what that level is. I'm not at a level of peer mastery. I'm a student. I'm learning like everybody else. I just have felt like I've learned a lot more than uh, most people because I, I sit and with myself. I invest more in myself than most people. How do you know a relationship is fruitful? What are you looking for, particularly with money? Okay. How do I know a relationship? This is beautiful. That is a beautiful question. And I love the way that you ask it, right? So this is how if I know that a relationship is fruitful. Is first, when we talk about fruitful, let's look at uh, what are the fruits of the spirit? What are the fruits of the spirit? One of, this was one of my biggest uh, realizations, right? Is that your thoughts and your way of being are the seeds that produce the fruits of your life. So when you come from a space of I don't have enough, then the fruits of your life look like I don't have enough. It looks like not enough money, not enough opportunity, not enough this, not enough that. So your thoughts and your ways of being are the seed that produces the fruits of your life. When you're being angry, you do angry shit and you have angry results. You have angry fruit. You got to get that. There's nothing that you've ever done. There's nothing that you're doing now or that you ever will do that doesn't flow from the person that you're being. Who you are being is everything. Your being produces the fruits of your life. When you're being abundant, you do the things that somebody doing abundance would do and you have abundant results. When you're being adventurous, you do the things that an adventurous person would do and you have the fruits of adventure. So you got to get that. All your life looks like right now. Your life is a direct manifestation. It's a direct reflection of the thoughts that you think the most. Any, This is what I do, those, that two-hour session that I do, right? It's for you to see exactly who you've been being that has created every single aspect of your life. Understand it's your own doing. It's not anybody else's. It's 100% your own doing. And that realization is so powerful. That's why the two-hour session is the most profound two hours that anybody will ever experience in their life. Because you'll see yourself like you've never seen yourself before. And you will see how it's your own creation. So if you could create yourself into stuckness, you could create yourself into power. If you could create yourself into lack, you could create yourself into abundance. If you could create yourself into doubting yourself, you could create yourself into knowing exactly who is it that you are in this world and what is it that you were created to do. It's your own doing. You have the ability to create anything in your life. The fruits that you experience are from the seeds that you've internally been planting in your life is in direct proportion to it. So when I look at relationships, if I want my fruit to be prosperous, the, the only thing I ask myself is, what are the fruits of the spirit? Because spirit is alignment. Spirit is wholeness. Spirit is knowingness. It's your body. It's your self that gets wavered. It's your soul that gets wavered because it's ba your soul is based off of your perception, what you see, hear, taste, touch, and smell. So your senses could get messed up, and that's why your soul gets tainted. That's why people say, I started losing my soul. I started losing myself, and I found myself again. So the spirit of the fruit, if you, it's, it's in the Bible. If you look at, and I'm not a Christian, right? But I believe in all spiritual systems, right? So if you say... What are the fruits of the spirit? I think it's like Galatians 23 or something like that. But the fruit of the spirit is patience. It's peace. It's forbiddance. Forbear forbiddance. It's well-being. It's self-control. So if the relationship that I have is not bringing me peace, it's not bringing me patience, it's not bringing me self-control, it's not bringing me love, then that's not the relationship for me. Joy, right? That is, that's not the relationship for me. Because that means that this relationship doesn't align with my spirit. It doesn't align with my spirit. I know it may be aligning with this or the outwardly things. This person buys me things. This person does everything for me. But that's not in alignment with your spirit. So when I look at any relationship in my life, personal, 
spiritual intimacy. I look for those things. Does it bring me these qualities? Because then that's when I know that this person is aligned with my spirit. That this person is aligned with my spirit. That was a good question. Uh, what was the other question? How long did it take to reach that level? Da, da, da. So we need to plant these seeds to reap the fruit. You have to. You're already reaping it. <laughs> People think you're only manifesting when you say powerful things in the mirror. Oh my God, I thought about $10,000 and $10,000 showed up. Yeah, you also manifested when you thought, when you said, I'm not good enough. I don't belong. I'm not confident enough. People are going to judge me. All those things produce fruits. You're never not creating. It's impossible not to. The breakthrough session is definitely one of the greatest things that I've done for myself, and I thank you for that. Yo, if you're still on, Bob, I would love to bring you on and hear about your session. Comment below if you're still on or just request to join. I would love to, to bring you up, especially since we talked to, uh, to you last week. Did the people around you change? Uh, did the people around me change? Not really. But hold on. Let me ask, let me ask that question. Let me, did the people around you change? Yes, the people around me changed. <laughs> but get this. It wasn't the people. Their lives didn't change. I just the people around me ended up changing. <laughs> so right now, it's not the same people that it was back then. <laughs> I want you to catch that. Yes, the people around me changed. <laughs> but it wasn't the people who them they personally changed. It's the people that are now around me change. I'm not around the same people. The people, I, because you only get people, circumstances, and opportunities that vibrate on the same frequency of you. So the past people in my life, we don't vibrate on the same frequency. I'm about to bring you on right now, Baba. We don't vibrate on the same frequency. It's like oil and water. It just won't mix. Like, it just won't mix. But the people that are now in my life, yeah, we vibrate. The conversation is way different. We, we speak from a place of possibility, not limitation. We talk about goals, dreams, and desires. We don't gossip about with this person or with this person. We don't talk about what we can't do. We talk about how to create what is it that we desire to do. So the people around me changed, not because the physical people actually, like the, the actual people are different. It's not the same people. All right, let me bring you on, Baba. Any other questions, drop it in the comments. I want to bring Baba on real quick. You know what's so, is last week, I think it was last week or maybe two weeks ago, he came up on live. And he said he was interested in doing a breakthrough session with me. He signed up for a breakthrough session. And I told him on live, I said, this breakthrough session will be the most powerful two hours that you've ever experienced. And I said, I'm saying it on live so that way the world can hold me to it. And when, after we do the session, I want to bring you back up to hear your, your perspective. Bob, are you there? I can't see you. Yeah, I'm here. I'm out here in Nigeria. It's, it's, it's about 1 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Is there any? Well, you can turn on the light real quick. Yeah. I see your face a little. I see them pearly white teeth, though. <laughs> so, so here's the thing. You know, you know how it is out here in Nigeria. Sometimes the light is here, and sometimes, sometimes it's not. not. All right, fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. So, I, I, I just want to hear from your perspective. How was the two-hour breakthrough session for you? So, it was, it was wonderful. And this is, this is what it's all about. You know, there's things that we know that we know. There's things that we know that we don't know. And then there's things that we don't know that we don't know. And the things that are inside of us that is really directly mold, helping to mold our reality is one of those, um, is, are those things that we got to get to in order to be able to shift and be able to make the changes that we need to make, right? And, you know, in speaking to you, that breakthrough session was, was phenomenal in helping me to realize what I, how i needed to shift what i needed to um adjust within myself and now start to create a different reality for myself to start to manifest the things that um my visions and my my aspirations have on my heart what god has placed on my heart right yeah um so it, it was phenomenal i mean um i we were on that session the day before i flew out to nigeria I did it that I did it that way specifically just so that when I came out here I could be away now that I'm away from you know home and the and the things of home I could really focus in on 
you know, starting to create the thoughts, the ways of being that I need to within myself in order yeah. to make the shift that I, that, that I need to make. Um, so it was really phenomenal. Um, and, you know, uh, you helped to create um, that, 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 that opening and that um, place, that space for shifting, you know, with encouragement and so forth behind you know um what you had just seen in in and from my actions at the moment you know so it was it was profound it is something you know i've done a lot of um powerful things in my life to help to have me on the path that i am right now uh but as we as you would already know the the, the decision to invest in in yourself um for your betterment um when god puts that on your heart, that that is necessary, and you make the moves for that, it is the opening for, for unlimited potential to, to greatness in, in your life. So for sure, it is one of those things that, that I'll always remember and, and build upon because I'm not done yet. We're not done yet when, when saying that. You understand what I'm saying? Because... Uh, like I like I told you in the first time I spoke to you, um, I'm one that believes in, in, in learning from and getting from even the youngest child um, uh, things that can better me. Yeah. Um, so the fact that you might be a little younger than me or something like that, that doesn't mean anything to me. What, what I see from you is and what I get from you is is the, the, the knowledge and the um, the the place to to move in order to to for me to elevate so yeah. um it was it was great it was phenomenal i, I, I would that. i would recommend it to anyone yeah i appreciate it and what would you say to somebody that's on the fence right somebody who might have tapped in with me you mentioned yourself how you watched videos of me leading up to this point you saw the lives but you kind of got to that tipping point and you made the decision into the two-hour session yourself which was phenomenal for you. What would you say to somebody out there that's, that was like yourself, that was kind of on the fence? Uh, what would you say to them? I would say exactly what you said in this session. When there is divine guidance that has led you to a certain point, then it's time for you to take action. It's time for you to take um, um, massive action. We, we, we sometimes, and not sometimes, a lot of times, um, allow ourselves to talk ourselves. I, I tell so many people, we are our greatest enemy. There's an African proverb that say, um, the, en the enemy, if, um, hold on. Uh, if we can get over the enemy within, the enemy without can't do us anything. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If we can get over that, that, that enemy that lies within, then there's nothing on the outside that can actually do us anything. Yeah. Um, and that's where we fall short. So if you're on the fence, if you came to this point to see to see and to be the point of being on the fence, it's time to make make action. It's time to take action and move forward in in doing in doing what is necessary for yourself because it was placed in front of you for a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate you, Baba man. I look forward to uh, keep co-creating with you in the future, man. I'll say travels out there in the motherland. Uh, bring me some back. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <And> have... <laughs> All right. I'm a, I'll do that. Uh, and how's it, Charles? And let me know when you touch back down. I definitely will. All right, Bobby. Peace. All right. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. I really appreciate. It. He's he operates on one of the highest levels of spirituality, and it says a lot about the person that uh, will still get what there is to get for themselves. My life has progressed away because I never got myself to a certain point. I don't believe there's a certain point to where it's like, I know it all and I, now there's nothing for me to learn or I got this by myself. I don't ever think there's a certain point to where it's like, I just got it by myself. There's always gonna be a level of insight. There's always gonna be something that I'm missing because you're, you're, you're on a journey, you're driving. That's why you have rear view mirrors and other things so you can see things that you can't see. And everybody has, things in their life that they can't see. I have a coach. Even though I coach top people in this world, I still have a coach. Because everybody, there's an aspect of your life of things that you can't see. It's just, are you willing to do the work and take the steps to get it for yourself? 
that's the only thing that separates me to most people. It's not, nobody has never not had opportunity. It is most people, they don't take advantage and they don't take action on the opportunity when it presents themselves. Like Baba said, they allow themselves to talk themselves out of things. I don't allow my, I don't talk myself out of things. I only talk myself into things. I use my words to speak power. I use my words to create. I use my words to speak limitation. I don't, I don't ever talk, talk myself out of things. I had somebody call me earlier that wanted to do a session. And she said, oh, I wish I could do a session. I wish, I wish it wasn't so far. I'm in New Zealand. What does that mean? <laughs> You're creating separation already. No. Now, it takes more to, to get here, but create it. You have the power to create anything. I move literally my physical location to work with my coach. I don't ever, I don't ever stop myself from getting what there is to get. I sometimes come up to detach. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm talking about. I sometimes come up myself to detach and I carry because I sweat a lot of things. I want to find a balance where I don't seem uh, insensitive. Uh, what's the question in that? What's the question? Is there a question? Any other questions before I hop off? Any other questions? Anybody else want to join? Anybody else want to come? Learn to talk yourself in two things. When you Ask your, when you talk about your goals and your dreams, just simply ask yourself, am I creating what's possible or if I'm, if I'm creating limitation that actually shuts it down? Am I opening up the possibility or if I'm closing the possibility? Just ask yourself those two things. What is your main, main source of income? God. God. <laughs> God is my main source of income. <laughs> God, God itself, Mother Nature, is my main source of income. <laughs> alignment. I get paid to be in alignment. Alignment is my main source of income. When I'm in alignment, things just happen. Investment, people, things just show up everywhere. Oh, my God. It's like God just has to be showing up everywhere every day. So something just showed up today. I'm like, this is fantastic. <laughs> I get paid to be me. I get paid to be in alignment. What a beautiful way to get paid. I don't have to do anything. I just have to be in alignment. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, y'all, listen. I'll be on again next week, 6 p.m. Uh, Eastern, 4 p.m. Mountain Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. Uh, have you ever done psychedelics? Yeah, I've done psychedelics. I've done uh, ayahuasca. I did an ayahuasca uh, trip before, which was absolutely extraordinary. And I've done a, a shroom trip before which was absolutely extraordinary as well. See you next week, Deborah, for our breakthrough session. Let's go. Anybody else that, if you're interested in learning about the breakthrough session, just DM me the word breakthrough. DM me the word breakthrough. We can get on a short call. I'll give you more information about it. Uh, but only DM me if you're actually serious and you're ready to take the next step. Respect for the reminder. More than welcome. Put it in your... Uh, your calendar next week, 6 p.m. Schedule it. Baba, when we were on the call, he showed me that he's scheduled. If it's not scheduled, it's not real. Uh, we definitely come to give you guys more free game. And also, the last thing before I get off this call, and listen, this year, I'm not doing these lives because I need something. I'm doing these lives to pour into the community, right? So in between these lives, re-watch it, write notes, write down questions. You have an opportunity to get free coaching. It's not to the capacity of, of our one-on-one -on -one session, but it's to the capacity of better than nothing. So like come with questions, come with insights, come ready to engage uh, in order to make this a better experience for each and every one of you. Deborah, I'll see you next week for our breakthrough sessions. If anybody else is interested, uh, DM me the word breakthrough and I'll uh, send you more information about it. Have a phenomenal, phenomenal week. I'll talk to you next week. Peace.